Hello everyone. I was up late last night editing this video, um, hit compile, went to sleep, and then woke up this morning to the news that uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky had been hit by an EF2 tornado. Of course, Bowling Green is sort of the center of the Corvette world. That's where the factory is, that's where the National Corvette Museum is, that's where NCM Motorsports Park is. Uh, Andy Pilgrim, retired Corvette racing driver, lives there. Um, and uh, of course, the people who make these wonderful cars possible all live there. Um, there's been reports of loss of life. There's been a confirmed report that the roof of the factory was on fire at one point last night. Um, so our hearts and prayers go out to them. Uh, I just didn't feel like I could post the video without mentioning this in some way. Um, when I was a small child, um, my family lost everything to a tornado and it was absolutely devastating. So keep them in your prayers and um, if there's anything you know, to donate or help out or anything like that that comes along, please consider it. Hello and welcome to Records Rebuilds. So the C8 Z06 videos have been some of the most popular I've ever done, much more popular than any of the videos of working on cars or anything like that around here. Um, so it was uh, inevitable that I was going to go back to the well on that, uh, but I wanted to wait until we had some actual hard information to discuss. You're not going to find any fake build sheets or, or crazy speculation on this YouTube channel. And there hasn't been, um, hasn't been a lot to go on lately, but I think we finally got enough stuff built up um, to talk about. We've got some really good news about Sioka Corvette allocations at the end of this video, so stick around for that if you're one of the people that uh, you know followed our advice and ended up snagging a good reservation at Sioka. Um, and then the rest of this video is just going to be kind of a, a compilation of things cobbled together from different sources. Um, but uh, the first is um, from YouTuber Speed Phenom. He's had a lot of really good information that came out uh, you know, after the initial, um, the initial announcement by Chevrolet. Um, and he's particularly, he saw two fact sheets, um, uh, beside a recent C8 Z06 display that can tell us some pretty good information. Uh, so you'll see the fact sheets here. And, uh, basically what we can find out from this is a few things. One, uh, the quarter mile, uh, the quarter mile, Quarter mile time is uh, 10.6 seconds. That's the official best quarter mile time for the C8 Z06. Uh, so that's thing one you can see on here. Uh, you can also see uh, that the Z06 comes standard with mag ride. So you're not going to have to choose whether or not you want mag ride on your C8 Z06. Um, the, the last thing is that some people were saying that uh, because every version of the C8 Z06 comes with some sort of ground effects, uh, that the, um, the the lift, the front end lift, would be standard, but that's not the case. You can see here clearly it's marked as optional equipment. There's also an interesting little tidbit you can pick out of YouTuber Eddie X's Z06 first drive video. Uh, if you go to 1611 in the video, and you can use just the period and comma keys to go back and forth uh, frame by frame, you will see that uh, although the Z06's red line is clearly 8600 RPM, at least in the prototype, if you pull both paddles to put the car in neutral mode, just so that you can rev it however you want, uh, it will rev to 9000. And again, that's at least the prototype car. Uh, when that car, the earlier in the video when they're driving that car on the street, it only revs to 8600. So I don't know if it matters that it can rev to 9000 in neutral or not. Maybe you think it sounds different and that's important to you, but I think it's one of those cool little things that hasn't been you know, fully released yet, but you maybe could pick up from a video if you watch it the right way. I also ran into a pretty cool video on a small YouTube channel called uh, Cruise Control. They've got about a thousand subscribers, so I guess that's pretty large compared to me, but a smaller channel. Um, and they had a, a really cool interview uh, with Harlan Charles. That's the guy who's in charge of marketing for the Camaro and the Corvette. And he had some really interesting things to say about the interior. Um, first, you know, we already know uh, you can get the Stingray right now with a stage one carbon fiber package. And the Z06 will introduce a stage two carbon fiber package. But for the first time that I've seen, he revealed uh, that the 3LZ package will have a carbon fiber steering wheel. 
and that in order to get that carbon fiber steering wheel, you will have to purchase the 3LZ package. Um, so, so that's interesting. He also mentioned that they're going to have a stealth aluminum package, uh, and he described that as sort of like a black chrome appearance on the aluminum panels on the interior. And, and he said the whole point behind that is sort of uh, to de-emphasize the aluminum so that the carbon fiber sticks out more. So that might be something that a lot of you guys are interested in. Uh, but I thought the really interesting things he had to say all revolved around the downforce of the car because it's some of the, the best hard numbers we've had on that ever for a Corvette. And, and we've been talking about that for years. So take a look at these numbers. So downforce has always been a bit of a mystery with the Corvette, and that's for good reason. For one thing, it's a bit difficult to quantify because the wind tunnels are all different and you'll get slightly different numbers. For another, how do you quantify it? Do you want drag coefficient? Do you want downforce coefficient? Do you want pounds of downforce? Whenever Taj has given us downforce numbers in the past, they have usually been in pounds of downforce, and that's a little bit difficult because... Uh, you know, downforce changes depending on the speed of the car. You know, the faster the car is going, the more downforce you're going to get. So when we hear 950 pounds of downforce, how many miles an hour is that at? You know, what does that mean? Um, to the best of my knowledge, the stage two and three downforce uh, was never quantified for the Z06. Uh, but, you know, some people uh, with some ca rough calculations were thinking around quote, 500 pounds of downforce, unquote, uh, you know, compared to the ZR1's 950 pounds. Uh, but it, it, we don't have an official number on that. We know that stage one arrow was neutral in the C7Z06. Uh, and then we know that stage two and three had more than that, but that's about all we know. Now, what's been said so far about the C8Z06 is that Taj has said the C8Z06 with the Z07 package has 8% more downforce with less drag than the C7ZR1. In fact, he stated that it had more downforce than any Corvette ever. Now this interview with Harlan is great because he tells us that the regular C8 Z06 can have neutral downforce or it can have 362 pounds of downforce at 186 miles per hour if we make some adjustments to the car. He also tells us that the C8 Z06 with the Z07 package has 734 pounds of downforce at 186 miles per hour. Now we know that Chevrolet is very firm in saying that's the most downforce of any Corvette ever. I don't really understand how that compares to three or four years ago when they were saying that the C7 ZR1 had 950 pounds of downforce, but I imagine it has to do with what speed that downforce was measured at. So it's awesome that the C8 Z06 has the most downforce of any Corvette ever available, but I find it really cool that the regular C8 Z06 without the Z07 package can be modified to be neutral or have 362 pounds of downforce. So what does that look like and how do they do that? Well, here's a slide from the Chevrolet website. So if you've been paying close attention, you already knew that the base C8 Z06 is going to have a wicker bill that you can add to the rear spoiler, which is going to add downforce back there. But I think what's new that I did not realize is that the front end of the car is going to have a removable front fascia panel and front underwing stall gurneys, which will increase downforce on the front of the car. So I think that's just great that it's going to be a car that you can decrease the downforce and the drag for when gas mileage when you're on the road. And then when you go to the track, you can totally change the arrow to get more downforce. And it's no small amount of downforce. You know, that may be equivalent to a stage two or stage three kit on the C7Z06. So uh, that looks just great from my perspective. Okay, so the rest of this video is going to be about Sioka Corvette and their reservation list. We featured that a lot on this channel, and I think a lot of people who are subscribed here are interested in knowing any information they can about that list. So the first thing to know 
is that the highest number, highest reservation number I saw anywhere on Corvette Forum was number 6,907. So there were almost 7,000 people who sent in that $2,000 deposit to try and get a reservation for the C8Z06, which is, quite frankly, just mind-boggling and amazing. Um, so uh, then, uh, just recently, we're getting a little bit more information. Um, first off, uh, how does the list normally work at Sioka? Well, uh, the way that it works is that um, you get your spot on the list, and then they don't update their list. Uh, if, if Three people drop out ahead of you. You do not uh, get your number changed by three places and move up. They leave the numbers the same. Um, and basically, uh, you're still in line. You moved up, uh, but you don't know how many people above you have dropped out. Um, so that's a little worrisome, I guess. Most of the time, it doesn't matter very much. Over on CorvetteForum.com, uh, they always keep a registry of you know where people were on the list and when their number came up. So you can get a pretty good feel for it, although it won't be exact because again, you don't know how many people dropped off the list. Um, but with a list that is 7,000 people long and expecting you know, maybe half of that list to drop out or more, it makes it a lot more difficult. And uh, we're glad to know that um, someone on Corvette Forum spoke with the great people at Sioka and they are working on giving us some sort of an update as to how many people have dropped off and you know where you're at on that list. Um, that Something like that is going to come after the holidays, they've said. So expect something like that in January, okay? Um, so none of this, I'm guaranteeing, it's all kind of hearsay and speculation, just things that people posted that they heard from Sioka on Corvette Forum, but reliable people people that I trust to not be making things up about this. So I think we can expect a good update from Sioka after the holidays about you know where you might be on the list. Um, so the really, really exciting news though is that um, one of the people who manages the list over at uh, Corvette Forum had this to say. Uh, he stopped by the dealership in Atlantic City the other day and uh, talked to a salesman and um, and this was the quote that he got. Okay, so quote was too strong of a word because this isn't a direct quote, but this is a post from Fast E60, who is the person who organizes the Sioka order tracking thread over on CorvetteForum.com. And he's saying that he talked to the salesman at Sioka, and they said that this year they are on track to deliver 1,500 C8 Corvettes. That's pretty amazing. Uh, that would be their highest volume year that they've ever done. Perhaps it's because they are combining the old Kerbic allocations with some of the allocations for Corvettes that come from other places within the Sioka Empire. Uh, that would make sense. Uh, and then furthermore, they expect to get about 2,000 C8s a year for the next two years. And then about 35% of those could be Z06s, meaning about 700 Z06s a year, which would be phenomenal news. So I really, really do trust that source or else I wouldn't be bringing it up here. But I don't want anybody to take away from this that Sioka has guaranteed that they're going to sell 2,000 C8s next year or 700 Z06s. Uh, but what I do take away from it is maybe we've been a little bit too pessimistic in the numbers that we're expecting. Maybe they really are going to get a ton of cars next year. Um, I think, you know, you can take away the people who know more than us just had their best year ever. I don't know how they did that in 2022, selling more Corvettes than any other year in their history. Uh, but the people who know the most know that they just had a great year uh, and they're expecting even more cars next year. And I think that's really great for us. So uh, just really great news. Um, I'm still anxious, I'm still nervous. I don't know what's gonna happen, uh, but I think that's good news. Uh, if you're nervous and uh, you're waiting, you know, wondering what you can do in the meantime, uh, I think one thing that's going to be really cool is the National Corvette Museum Bash. Uh, that's coming up in April. Uh, I believe it's, yeah, it's April 28th through 30th. Um, and at the bash every year, they always rule out, they roll out whatever new product they have for Corvette. If there's any new colors, those will definitely be there. And I think if you're going to be ordering the C8 Z06, that is your best chance before next year, uh, you know, to see the Z06 in person. 
uh, and to see probably every color of it. Usually there's an example of every color somewhere in the area there next to the factory. So uh, you can look at all the options in person, you can look at the colors in person, you can decide exactly what you want to order. Uh, and then of course there's going to be lectures by probably by Taj, uh, lots of other engineers and marketing people uh, to tell you everything you want to know about the car. You may even get to ask them some questions personally. Um, so if you're excited about the C8 and you live anywhere near uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, then I think it's a great idea to head down there next April. I am going to try to do that. Uh, and uh, if I do, hope to see you there. Other than that, uh, have a happy holidays and I'm out.